there were many pigments available to the artists in this era. The cost of pigments determined many of the techniques. So umber, which was a very cheap pigment, is created from numerous earth minerals and clays and rocks. It wasn't just a brown color that you think of when you think of umber. It was available in reddish tones, more yellow tones, cool tones, green tones, blue tones. So when we think of umber layer, it didn't necessarily mean totally brown. What I have out here is three parts of raw sienna and one part of raw umber. And I am going to create a mix that's very similar to what's right here in the middle. Paint is going to be used very thin. The work was started with either pen and ink or a brush, a liner brush, or a round brush, and very thin paint. Umber was cheap and dried very quickly. So it was a great way to place the drawing onto the surface. I'm just going to mix these three uh, piles of raw sienna and the one of raw umber together to create a middle umber. Now it's looking darker right now simply because it's more opaque. I'm going to place blending medium into the entire pile. There won't be any time in the drawing or the umber layers that I would use the paint in this amount of opacity. I need it thinned so it's more transparent and I need it more like ink. <clears throat> Excuse me. So as I work the blending medium in here I'm watching my palette paper because I want as I pull that out I need to see a transparency. I'm going to test this one to see if it's transparent enough. If not, I'll put more blending medium into it. The drawing was always done with a round brush if they were using paint. So I have a, the number 30 script liner traditions brush and I'm going to place it first into the blending medium to dampen it and then blot it on my paper towel to take that excess moisture out of it and I want to place it into the paint in somewhat of a scribbling manner so that it's loaded from the tip to the ferrule. Now this brush is capable of holding a tremendous amount of paint and will work much like an ink pen for you if you will practice with it just a little bit. Once you're loaded, you want to tap it as you pull it out. I don't want such fat lines as that amount of paint is capable of giving me, and I can see the brush is totally filled at this time, and I don't have a nice point. I've just got a whole lot of paint in it. So I'm going to continue to tap it out until the time that I get a really nice point. And at that point, it is time then to see if this is going to work for me. My first test is always on the palette itself, and we want to hold the brush like you'd hold a pencil comfortable but in a good grip and in the same way that you would use a pencil to write 
I'm going to use the brush because I'm not thinking of this as a brush. I'm thinking of it as an ink pen. The brush is placed on a surface and we're going to write is what we're going to do. I need to see whether there's enough paint in there to give me a continuous line, but I don't want a big fat line. It needs to be about the width of a fine tipped pen. So my hand is going to move, my brush is not going to move. Remember this is a pen, not a brush. So as you're writing, you can, my favorite is to make the ovals to see how many I can make and to test the transparency of the paint. I don't want it too terribly dark. Acrylic always dries darker than it, what you see it when it's wet. I want as fine a line as I can get. If you're overloaded on that brush, and I'm going to go back in and put paint on it, you'll see the brush swells with the paint. It looks different with that much paint in it, and the point is not as sharp. But that load is used when we create the trees. When I come down to the surface then, I can write, but I'm going to get much more color, and I'm going to get fatter lines. So you can determine faint or heavy, not so much by changing the amount of blending medium in your paint, it's by the way the brush is loaded. The paint with that much blending medium in it does not need to be on a wet palette. It will be several days before I would lose that paint. We will use this mix throughout the first part of the painting and then we'll change it and create some variations of the mix by the addition of more raw umber or the addition of more raw sienna. So this would be more raw umber and here's more raw sienna. But I don't need to do that until I'm ready to use it. When I'm through painting for the day, I leave the paint on this surface and I cover it with these little condiment cups. You can cover it with press and seal. You do need to cover it so that you stop the airflow. But I just have a condiment cup here and I just set it like that. I've got paint here on my palette. That's my simple green that I have had here probably since last week. This is the yellower version, but here's the same one that I just made, and it's just as wet as the one you watch me create. It's the same mix, it's a week old. So the cup will keep them for you. You don't have to worry about losing a mix for the different steps of the umber layer. I'm just putting that one back because here's my new mix. I'm now going to have quite a bit of this color. If you feel that it's too thick to use your brush like a pen, just add more blending medium and then test it. If you're working for a long period of time, you may find that it's beginning to feel thick. So just thin it down again.